Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Katrina Stoops, and I am the e-learning faculty development coordinator. Uh, we are very excited to start this year with a new uh, CSI series. We have several new topics for this quarter. And as you all know, we started offering CSI uh, webinars, we call them web workshops, last year. And it became very, very popular. So we have delighted to continue this tradition this year as well. As you all know, CSI stands for Connect, Share, and Inspire. And our goal for this webinar is to share teaching best practices, connect with our fellow colleagues, and also to um, inspire to adopt new teaching strategies in our classrooms. Today, we will talk about the Great Center. And our presenter, Erin Thornbury, will share her tips on how to manage Grade Center and um, its associated tools. During this workshop, you will have many opportunities to discuss and share your ideas. You can use chat to type your comments and uh, questions. Uh, but we actually would like to encourage all of you to use your microphones and um, talk. That's why we did a quick audio check in the beginning of the webinar, actually before the webinar began. Um, one quick tip, when you're not um, speaking, please uh, keep your mics uh, muted so that we don't get any background noise. If you do not have a microphone, you can always call in the session by clicking on the icon that looks like a menu up at the top and then select uh, use your um, phone uh, for audio, yes, use your phone for audio. If you have any technical issues during this workshop, you can use chat and just uh, let us know about the issue you're experiencing and we'll uh, try to troubleshoot. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Erin Thornbury. Erin is the Director of eLearning at City University of Seattle. She oversees the administration of Blackboard and its associated technologies at City, for CityU. Erin also advises faculty on best practices in instructional design and learning technologies. Erin has designed and taught educational technology courses for CityU and also the University of Tennessee. Erin holds a bachelor's degree in, um, in art education from a Pennsylvania State University and a master's in, in uh, instructional technology from the University of Colorado. And she is currently working on her doctorate in learning and leadership at the University of Tennessee. And without further ado, Erin, please take it away. Thank you, Ekaterina, and hopefully I will finish that doctorate <laughs> sometime in the near future. It is taking a very long time. Um, anyhow, uh, hello all, and thank you for joining us uh, this morning for um, a, a webinar on the Grade Center. And the objectives for this webinar are fairly simple. Um, what I'm going to do is walk you through what I do before I start a class to make sure my Grade Center is ready to go and I know it's going to calculate uh, correctly for my students and I don't get those big questions at the end of the term. Um, but So to help you avoid some of the common pitfalls that me and my team see um, on a regular basis, so we'll be going over some of those and trying to help you avoid them. Um, increase your efficiency, so how to use the grade, maximize the space in the Grade Center, maximize the Grade Center functionality, hopefully to save you some time, and then also to see this, the Grade Center from um, a student's perspective. I noticed that we have quite a range of um, faculty who've joined us this morning. Um, Many of you have lots of experience in Blackboard and will probably have um, tips and tricks to add to the conversation, so I hope you will do that. Um, and then I see some new names too, so um, I would like to emphasize as I did last time, and also this is, this is a webinar that we offered in the past. Um, it's something that we continually see issues with. The Grade Center in Blackboard is not always the most user-friendly. Um, we do see a lot of um, issues usually towards the end of the term, so it's something that we thought we should re-offer. So those of you who might have joined me in a previous webinar, 
Um, hopefully we'll have some different topics because you all are really going to drive um, the topics that I talk about after I kind of walk you through what I do. Um, but to reemphasize something that we talked about uh, the last time this was offered, we do have a wide range of skills um, represented in this group. So those of you who have lots of experience are going to ask you to be patient. And those of you who are new, if I move too quickly, um, please don't hesitate to raise your hand, um, post something in the chat, and let me know that you've missed something so we can hopefully recap. Uh, so this is your workshop. I kind of have an itinerary of things that I plan to go over, um, but I want to make sure that I answer your questions to, to the best of my ability, and I might throw those questions back to the group because some of you might have better answers than me. Uh, but uh, what questions do you currently have about the Grade Center? What challenges are you facing? And I'm going to try to type those up on the board here to capture our list. So what things would you like to hear about or see me demo? Perhaps you could start with itemizing the items you already have listed and then we can add to that. Sure. So what I'm going to uh, go over is my Grade Center check. So uh, making sure that um, all of the columns that should be in the Grade Center are there, um, that they're visible to students, that they're visible to me, uh, maximizing the space in the Grade Center, making sure uh, point values are accurate, uh, categories are accurate um, within the, the Grade Center, depending on what type of grading methodology you're using. So weighted total or uh, just points total is, uh, those are kind of the two main themes or options that we see. So I'll go over both of those. Um, I have extra credit bullet pointed up there because that has been a big issue in the past, uh, how to effect, effectively add extra credit. Um, and have it calculate into your total the way you intend it to. So um, those are things that I'm going to be going over, um, as well as using a, a test student account to test how your Grade Center uh, is calculating. Make sure it's calculating correctly. We have a couple more minutes. You can post it in chat or Shout it out loud. OK, if you have questions as I go, just let me know. I'm going to assume that um, you all are super excited about my itinerary. Uh, is there a way to show feedback without giving it a grade? Is that <clears throat> what an exempt? is for. Um, there, uh, is there a way, yes, you, well, let me think about that one, Becky. Um, you can set up draft assignments that are worth zero points, um, and that is a way you, you would still you know, put in zero or make a check mark. Really, I can show you. I can set up the Grade Center to um, enter a check mark and, as opposed to a grade um, that isn't calculated into the student's grade. So maybe that seems to probably be the best way to uh, provide feedback without impacting the grade. So that's a good question. And we can see what others have to say about that, too. OK, I will make a note to go over that. Um, if you think of questions along the way, uh, feel free to interrupt or uh, post them in the chat. Um, I do have the chat pulled up so I can read those questions as I demo my screen. So I'm going to open up and share my screen with you. Um, this will take just a second. Okay, 
So um, what I'm going to use to demo the course is the student orientation uh, to online learning at CityU. This is an open orientation course that um, students are either advised to take by their advisors or their program directors um, or automatically enrolled in if they're part of certain student groups. Um, <clears throat> it has no consequence on their grade whatsoever. It is mostly a self-paced course um, that is facil currently facilitated by myself. Um, just so students get an idea of how to use Blackboard. So uh, I'm going to use this course as an example, um, but you might see a couple things that are set up a little bit differently than um, some of your courses that are for credit. So anyhow, the first thing that I do uh, when I open my class to get started is I will add a student preview user account. And I do this because it gives me an opportunity to use this, uh, it's basically a test account to experience the student, the, the class the way my students will. Uh, for one, it allows me to go through all the modules and see what they're going to see just the way they see it, um, submit assignments and receive feedback, so I can really see what my students are going to experience. It also um, adds a user to the Grade Center, and that gives me an opportunity to test out those calculations uh, and make sure that they are um, calculating the way I intend them to. So that's another great use for the student preview account. So to do that, you go to this little eye icon up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see this yellow bar uh, that says you're entering the student preview mode. And this is what your students would see. So you can navigate through your course as if you were uh, a CityU student. So that's a great tool with it in and of itself. I don't, I'm not going to do that part right now. I'll probably look into that later. Um, does the student preview account also figure into column statistics? So if you're showing, this is a question from Garen. So if you're showing um, the mean or mode of uh, the grade calculations within uh, your grade center, you're, you can, you have the option to share those with your student. I actually, uh, don't know, Garen. That's a great question, um, and that's something that we could easily test to find out, uh, but I, I am not positive about that one. So I'm not actually going to preview my course right now. I just want to add this test student, so I'm going to exit the preview. You should be prompted with a message that says, do you want to share the student preview data, or do you want to delete it? And in this case, I want to or not share. Do you want to keep it, or do you want to delete it? Um, and in this case, I want to keep it. If I hit delete, that means I won't see that student user in the Grade Center, and that's really what I want to accomplish here. So I'm going to select, toggle that to keep the preview user and all of its data, and hit continue. That will take me back to um, the instructor view, and the next place I go is directly to the Grade Center and full Grade Center. to take a look at what I have inherited from the master course. Um, as most of you know, all of our courses are copied off of what we call the master shell. Um, so any section of this student orientation looks exactly the same and is set up exactly the same. And then the instructor has the opportunity to make some modifications. So let's see what I got. Um, one thing I like to do, because depending on the size of your computer screen, the grade center can seem really cramped. Uh, so the first thing that I like to do when I get in here is I'm going to be working in the grade center for a while. I don't really need to see the navigation menu. So I'll hover over that area between the grade center and the course navigation and click that gray bar to collapse it to the right. That just gives me a little extra space uh, to see the Grade Center, a couple more columns in the Grade Center and not have to scroll quite so much. <clears throat> so here you can see, um, I have a lot of, I didn't think I had quite so many students in here. I want to make sure that I am in the right section. Um, again, Karen, uh, Garen, this is a um, 
This is a test, well, not a test. I am actually taking you into the master shell of, oh, that's why I, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm taking you into the master shell of uh, the student orientation just for this demo. So no, I wouldn't expect I would have students in here. And the orientation is on a different schedule. But students will be added to uh, live shells this Friday for most. Oh, sorry, Carolyn. Um, students will be added to uh, live shells uh, this coming Friday. So again, collapse that menu. And here's the course that I wanted to use. Um, so now I can see more columns in the Grade Center. And I'm just going to take a quick scroll across to see uh, what columns are visible, what columns are hidden, if I have any duplicate columns or anything looks off. Um, so I can see <clears throat> I have uh, the welcome column is set to not display to students. That's what that red slash indicates. So my students will not see this column or the results of it, although it would be calculated into um, their total uh, grade if it is worth anything. I think in this case it's not worth anything. Uh, there's another hidden column. I see that quiz one is hidden, and I know that that's one that I actually want students to see, so I'm going to want to make sure that I show that column to students. So I'm going to click on the arrow beside the name, and I'm going to select hide from students on off. And that's going to toggle that slash off. So Becky asked, why would I not want students to see a Grade Center column? Uh, this welcome column is a, actually an indicator for me. Students are added to the orientation course at all different times. So I added this column that I can track what students have received a welcome letter. They don't really need to know whether they've seen a welcome letter or not. It doesn't calculate into their grade at all. It's really just tracking for me. So they don't need to see that column. Uh, another reason why I might not want students to see a Grade Center column is if I'm starting to grade it and I know that I'm not maybe going to be able to grade it in a very timely fashion, so it might take me a day or two. Um, a lot of times I will turn that column off from student view so that um, Jane Doe doesn't see her grade and then John Smith doesn't and they talk and John doesn't know why he can't see his grade but Susie can. So um, I'll turn it off, grade everybody, and then when I feel confident that it's ready to go, I will show it to students again. So that's another reason why you might want to hide the column. And I have one more column that's hidden, so I'm going to show that one to students as well. And I, I see one problem right off the bat. There's a weighted total column here at the end of the list. And I know I also had one up here at the front. This is a common um, issue, a common situation, because we do copy off courses, existing courses. Sometimes you will get duplicate columns. You'll get duplicate, mostly um, calculated columns, like the total and the weighted total. Um, and that can be confusing for students, particularly if they're not being calculated in the same way. Uh, so I want to make sure that I check those columns and delete the one that I don't need. There's a trick to doing this. Um, the weighted total in particular, a lot of times the calculations for that weighted total are copied, well, almost always, are copied off of the master. And so I want to make sure that I'm deleting the newest column and not um, the oldest column is typically the one that I'll want to keep because that's the one that has the um, calculations from the master. So I'm going to show you how you can check the age of the column and then delete the appropriate one in just a second. Um, also, if I saw a column in here, uh, another duplicate column, say that was an assignment, um, that I knew wasn't accurate and I needed to get rid of. I had two assignment ones or something like that. Um, if I click on that contextual menu, the arrow beside, you'll notice that I don't have a delete option. Whereas if I, 
uh, go to one of these other columns, I have a delete column. If you try to delete a column from your Grade Center and you don't have that option, that is an indication that it is linked to some assessment in the course itself. So that assignment one is still floating. You have two assignment ones that are floating somewhere in your course. And in order to delete that column, you need to go and delete the assessment that's associated with it. And when you delete the assessment that's associated with it, you should be prompted to delete the Grade Center column along with it. So um, that's a good indication that you ha might have some additional cleanup to do in your class. It's not necessarily just the Grade Center. You have some issues with your assessments in your class. We see that a lot with discussion boards. So if you see multiple columns for the same discussion board, um, hopefully one of them you can delete, whereas the other one you might not be able to. Okay, so I've checked it out. I see that I have some issues with two weighted total columns, so I know I need to get rid of one of those. Um, but I'm going to check the age of those. And to do that, I'm going to go to Manage, Column Organization. And this is going to give me a great overview of the columns and their various settings within this course. So here I see uh, the first weighted total. And uh, the date created says none. <laughs> And then uh, the weighted total calculated grade, um, the weighted total says September 26, which is actually today. So I know that that's the newest column. So that's the one that I am going to delete because um, it was created by mistake, likely by me. Uh, and then this one is the one that was copied from the master and likely has the calculations that I would like to keep. So unfortunately, I can't check the box next to this weighted total and delete it from the screen. That would be a great feature for Blackboard to add, and um, we will be sure to let them know about that. Um, but because I can't do it here, I'm going to make a little note to myself to delete that weighted total column. And also note where it is. So it is at the very end of the Grade Center uh, column. So that means that it's going to be all the way to the right hand side of uh, the Grade Center. So I don't want to delete the first weighted total I see. I want to delete the one that's all the way to the right. So that's the first thing. I also see that there are actually two total columns. So I have a hidden total and I have a uh, total, another total at the top. I'm going to make sure that I unhide that hidden total. Just because it says that it's hidden here doesn't mean that it is hidden from my students. It could just be hidden from me in the Grade Center. So I always go through and unhide all of the hidden columns uh, to make sure that they're not hidden from students or they are hidden from students depending on my desire for uh, the student experience. So I'm going to show those columns. So you can see they're, they're no longer gray and they no longer say hidden. Um, I can also order things here uh, chronologically. So this is how you can um, organize your grade center uh, in a way that's going to work most efficiently for you. So I like to order things chronologically by their due date. Um, you can see the due dates listed here in this, in this column, and I also can see that I'm missing um, a due date. So for the collaborate recording activity, there is no due date set. So I'm also going to make a note to myself to go back and set that due date uh, for that particular assessment, because I want my students, my students to know when it's due um, and get indicators as to when that uh, activity is due. But I can also see that my columns are out of order. So module four, if my due dates are correct, so another great thing would be to compare the due dates that you see listed here with what's in your, your uh, course schedule to make sure that they uh, align. And let's say that they do for uh, the sake of argument. And I have one column here that appears to be out of sequence. So I'm just going to take that column and drag it. Uh, into order. 
assuming that um, the Collaborate recording is due before then. So now my columns are in order chronologically, the way that I like to work through the Grade Center that's going to allow me to kind of work from right to left and again maximize that space. Uh, the other thing I can do here is check the point values. I do know that this course is using a weighted total and my weighted total uh, approach is to set everything at 100 points and then to add the weights on top of that. When you uh, use a combination of different point values and weighted uh, and weight the grades, you are setting yourself up to double weight assignments and to make it very challenging for students to be able to track their progress in the course. So if you are not able to give students a formula to help them calculate their grade uh, using the, your weighted total uh, calculations, I would highly suggest that you use um, straight point values. Now, I know some of you can't necessarily make that decision. That's a decision that's made by the course manager. Um, but that's a good conversation to have. And if you're going to use a weighted total, um, I highly recommend that you go off of 100 points. Um, it makes for very straightforward calculations for students. Um, so they, for you and for students, so it's easier to track how things are going um, in the course. So what are the benefits? This is one question that came up before. I think actually Cindy, who's here, had asked the, the question before. What are the benefits of weighted total versus uh, straight point values? Um, the clear benefit that I can see to a weighted total is that it allows you for a little more flexibility um, in changes that you might need to make to the course as you move forward. So if you have, in this uh, particular class, I have um, three discussions that are all worth 20%. And let's say um, in discussion board one, I notice that my students are really struggling uh, with a particular issue. It allows me to maybe add an additional activity uh, that to that same discussion category uh, to address that um, issue that students are having and give them an opportunity to get some points for it. Um, so again, that's going to distribute the points for that particular category. Uh, if you add an additional assignment, that means each discussion board is going to be worth a little bit less. Um, but it gives you that flexibility to add some little activities to uh, your instructor determined assignments in particular. Um, the benefit of, you can also reduce things, right? If students seem like they're being overwhelmed and um, they don't, you know, you want to give them extra time to work on an assignment, so you're going to get rid of a discussion board. Um, that those points will be distributed across the remaining discussion boards. So they get a little bit more for the discussions that they um, participated in. Um, points, if you're using set points, it's a little bit more challenging, um, although you can always, you know, take your activities and let's say you, you've decided um, instructor determined activities are going to be 100 points of the final grade. You can always tweak them a little bit so maybe they're nine and you add one additional assignment but it's a lot more it's a lot more work it's a little bit more difficult to communicate um, but if your um, if your course is pretty set then the point values are very straightforward for students they're just taking an average of the points received uh, from the points available and um, are able to calculate their grade easily as the course proceeds. It's also easier for that extra credit. So, and we'll talk about extra credit a little bit more in a second, but it does make, using po straight point values makes um, extra credit a little bit simpler too. So that was a lot of information, but um, all that is to say that I wanted to reset this one um, assignment to be worth 100 points, just like everything else. So I'm gonna make a note about that. Um, and Garen wanted to add to the discussion, he says weighted totals also 
even the field for different learning preferences. A bit more discussion needed for that one, but just thought I would mention it. Yeah, so if we have time, we'll go to Garen and he can kind of tell us a little bit more about what he means um, in that regard. So um, the last thing that we would want to check on the screen would be the categories. Like I said, I am using um, a weighted total. And so um, everything, I have discussion boards all in the discussion board ca category. I know the survey isn't factored into the grade. A test and assignment are factored independently of each other, so they don't need to be in a shared category. Um, but I see that the group and the collaborate recording, I know that those are activities that I want to group together and give students um, a 20% of their, let's say 20% of their grade on those uh, particular activities. So I'm going to um, check those and assign them to a category so that I can make sure that my weighted total is calculating correctly. Okay, other than that, everything looks good, so I'm going to hit submit. Any questions about anything that I've covered before I leave this screen? Hey, Erin. Hey, Mom. Thank you for this uh, very rich uh, information you are giving us. Uh, just uh, if you uh, can go over this last, I mean, the group uh, you were just mentioning, uh, once again, uh, it would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, so um, I was talking about the, the weighted total. Um, I have two activities um, that I want to group together in one category so that they are um, weighted together. Um, and that would be the group activity and the collaborate recording. Those are activities that I want to be worth 10% of the grade, let's say. So in order to assign them a category together, um, I need to set their category. And to do that, I can check the box next to the names of the columns that I want to group together, and then go down to change category and assign them to a category of my choosing and I'm choosing one that I'm, I'm not currently using. The other category, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Students don't see that. Um, it's just really to help me with the calculation. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that, all of those changes. And now I'm going to go back to my notes and make those, uh, make those changes. So I know this weighted total was the one that I wanted to keep. I'm going to go and I'm going to check that in a little bit. Um, but this weighted total was the one that I wanted to get rid of, so I'm going to delete that column. And I'm going to delete that uh, second total column as well, which was hidden. And then, um, as far as the two totals that I have here, um, this second total, because I am using a weighted total in this class, I don't want students to get confused and calculate their grade incorrectly by using this total that you see here is a running total just using straight point values. Um, so if students see the point values divided by uh, the available point values, um, they're not going to get a clear idea of how they're doing in the class. I, however, would like to continue to see that um, just for my own reference. So that's another column that I'm going to um, hide from my students. So they are only seeing the total that is actually going to um, reflect their grade in the class. So. Let's talk about the weighted total. That's Carolyn's uh, question. We're, let's make sure that our weighted total is calculating correctly or, or is set up correctly. So this is where you're going to want to pull out your syllabus because your syllabus is going to tell you what the uh, weight should be for those assignments. And you're going to use that as a reference as you set um, the weights within this column. So again, 
access the contextual menu for that column, and I'm going to edit the column information. At the top, we have um, just information about the column itself, how the grade is going to be displayed here. It's a percentage. Um, one of the things that uh, folks might be new to some of you is underneath here, you also have the city U scales. Uh, so you can easily add those scales to your course. So if you want to show your students the percentage that they're getting in the class and then how that translates to the city U scale, the four point scale, or the letter grade, um, you can add those to your course as well by changing uh, the primary display. The secondary display is going to be just for you. So if you want to see the point value so that when you go to submit final grades, um, you have that reference, uh, you can change just the, um, just a secondary display so that you can see what that four-point scale would be. And we'll see what that looks like in a second, too. So here's where I set the weights, and I see that they actually have not been set for this course. Um, but I know that I have two categories. I have a discussion board category that has three columns in it. So after highlighting it above in the category selection, you should get an indication of what assignments are actually in that category displayed below. So the discussion board, I want to pull over, and that other category, I want to pull over. And it has those two activities that I mentioned. So I'm going to pull those over too. And then I have um, assignment one and quiz one. And that should be everything uh, based on my syllabus. The, that's what factors into uh, the grade in this class. So I'm going to make the assignment worth 20%. And these, again, you're pulling right off of your syllabus what these settings should be. Um, you just need to make sure that everything adds up to uh, 100. So I'm going to need to make... And you'll see the 100 displayed below um, where you're setting your percentages. So based on my syllabus, that's uh, how this course should be set up. So everything else looks good. I'm going to hit Submit, save those changes, and my weighted total is ready to go. Um, the other thing that I typically do, which I forgot to mention, um, again, to maximize that space in the Grade Center is going to be uh, to hide some additional columns that I don't need. So I'm going to go back to Manage Column Organization, and up at the top, um, if you have uh, unique last names in your course and you can identify your students, you believe that you'll be able to identify your students by last name, um, you can move the first name uh, down below this gray bar. So anything that appears below this gray bar um, is not frozen. So I'll continue to see the last name on the left-hand side regardless of how far I scroll to the right or the left. Um, the rest of the columns will disappear, giving me more room. So I'm going to I have unique last names in my course, we'll say, and so I'm just going to use the last name. Um, and then I also, I don't use my students' usernames um, to identify them. I don't use their student ID to identify them. And everybody who's in the course is going to be marked as available, so I don't need to see that column either. So I'm going to hide those. Uh, columns from the Grade Center. And again, this is just to maximize that space. So um, I only see the things that I really need to. So submit those changes. And now I will just see the last name as I scroll to the right. And those additional columns have also disappeared. So Becky had a question. She says, is this already done for us, or do we need to do this at the beginning of each course? I have only taught one course so far, but for future reference, I will be doing this. Um, you definitely want to take a look at the Grade Center, um, if only to familiar, 
familiarize yourself and to feel confident that how you, um, that the Grade Center is set up and matches your syllabus. Uh, it should be set up for you, but as I mentioned, what can happen when we copy courses is additional columns can be added in that process. Uh, so you want to get rid of those total columns, for example. Um, and sometimes there's errors in the Grade Center, and so it's great that it's, it would be great for you to so that you don't get caught up and believe that everything's working and then find out really late in the term that, oh, uh, this is not working how I thought it would and then have, you know, students upset. So it's helpful to go through this process for your own benefit um, so you can feel confident that it's, it's working the way you want. Okay, so the last uh, item that I wanted to show you, and I'm going to need to add my preview account again to this class because I added it to the other one. <clears throat> and yes, Garen, I can show that. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you, and then I'll get to Garen's question, um, is here's my preview account. So now what I can do, now that I believe my Grade Center is set up the way that it should be, I can go in and I can add um, grades. So I'm not going to be able to add it to the weighted total. But for the assignments, which start here, I'm going to go across and I'm going to um, add in those grades. And you can see it start to calculate here in the weighted total. They're getting, and there's that uh, city use scale. So they're getting 100%, which uh, equals a 4.0. And I'm going to go all the way across and enter in their grades. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and check, and they're getting 140%, which is still a 4.0, um, but obviously is incorrect. Does anyone know why it's not calculating? Michelle, you're not supposed to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle gave it away, but anyway, <laughs> um, we, I neglected to go back and set that, um, that 20 points. Uh, we had one column, uh, if you remember, that was set to um, only be worth 20 points. So this is an example of, you know, you think it doesn't have a big impact, uh, but, you know, we have a column worth 20 points that incidentally uh, received 80 additional points, and so um, we want to make sure that we go back and set that. So that was, um, I believe that was the collaborate activity. So I'm going to edit that column information, and oh no, it wasn't that one. It was the group activity, Michelle says. So. Maybe it's not so bad that she gave the answer away. Should only be one. There it is. I think it was only one. And now let's check to see if it's calculating. Yep, so there we go. So 100 points across the board, 100 points percentage, and a 4.0 scale. Um, so Garen's question was, because we're running out of time, uh, Garen's question was, if you have, so I have, this is a really small class, obviously, and most of these users are, are demo users or faculty. Um, if you have a large class um, and it's, they're not all displaying in the same screen, uh, you can edit the rows displayed. So down here in the right-hand corner, um, edit rows displayed, and you can increase this uh, to show as many students as you want um, or as few students as you want. So... Um, 
I have an orientation course that's going on right now that has 230 students in it. I don't think I will be showing all of those at one time, but it would be nice to see 50 of them at a time, um, so I don't have to page through quite so many. And Cindy is asking if CityU has a preference on what we use for primary and secondary display. Um, it's really instructor choice because the secondary display doesn't show for students. So the primary display, um, again, I think it's helpful if you're using the weighted total to show students uh, the weighted total as a percentage and then add a column, uh, a, to a total or weighted column that's going to show them what that looks like as the city view scale. So they're not getting any um, surprises when they see what grade they actually get um, for their final. So two separate columns. If you want to show the students multiple things, you'll have to add separate columns for that. Prim secondary display is only for instructors. Um, either, I actually don't know why there are two scales showing. That's, that's a good question, Cindy. I just noticed that when I pulled that up. Um, my understanding is that either of those will work. Um, but Michelle, yeah, there were, there were two of each of those, Whitney, it looked like. But um, we'll have to take a look at that. My understanding is that both of them will work, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. Somehow they got duplicated, though. Any other questions before I turn it back to, um, there's one from Garen. And if anyone else has any other questions, I'm going to turn it back to Ekaterina to wrap things up. Um, yes, so the City U scale and the City U letter are definitely different. Um, it would be beneficial to make sure that what you are displaying to students is how they are actually, what their grades are actually going to, how they're going to be displayed to students in the, in the, in PeopleSoft, in the, in the student center for their final grade. And that's something, if you're not sure how to check, uh, you can check with um, your course manager, your primary supervisor, and we might even be able to dig up that information for you. So it's also, I believe, Whitney showed me it was listed um, in the faculty center when you go to submit grades you can see what choice you have um, and will indicate what students see yes Becky if you need any more help with any of this please do uh, that and that goes for everyone in the session please do reach out to us um, Whitney Michelle um, are actually way better at all of this than me, <laughs> um, but any of us would be really happy to help you um, if you have any questions about the Grade Center um, or anything in Blackboard. Okay, I'm going to turn it back over to Ekaterina. Let me stop sharing and you can take it from there. Thank you, Erin. It was very informative and thank you everyone for um, your questions and comments. Um, and just, I have just a couple of very, very quick announcements. Yes, Erin. Um, so Erin is showing the um, our email, bbsupport at cdu.edu if you have any questions about um, Blackboard Grade Center or any other questions about Blackboard, please email us. And um, the announcement. So I will be sending out an evaluation form with just a couple, maybe more than a couple, I think it's like three questions about this um, workshop. And if you could leave your suggestions, um, that would be great. And we also have three more webinars planned for this uh, quarter. Every quarter we do three to four um, webinar so we offer new topics so this quarter we have four and one of them is Blackboard Center we'll have another session on Blackboard Center sometime this week I think it's Thursday if you would like to attend again uh, please do and the other topics that we will be offering this quarter is um, gamification um, and then accessibility and then fake news so in October uh, we will be offering um, a brand new webinar on gamification and the presenter Greg Price will talk about how to gamify your um, course content and also he'll be talking about motivational behavior and eight core drivers so it's a very interesting webinar um, and then um, 
at the end of October and the beginning of November, we'll be uh, offering a webinar on accessibility. And Presley Rankin, who will be presenting for this webinar, will talk about um, how to create accessible online content. But it's not just for online courses, it's for everybody. Um, so he'll be sharing his strategies. And the last webinar for this quarter will be offered um, at the end of November and also in the beginning of December, and it's on fake news. Um, so it's a very popular topic, and our wonderful librarians, Jennifer Bodley and Elizabeth Sinclair, will be talking about information literacy and how to help students learn how to evaluate sources. So if you haven't registered for this webinars, please do. We have a um, few seats available. So as I said, this, uh, this webinars are very, very popular, and we have a, a limited amount of seats for each webinar. If you would like to attend one of those webinar, webinars, please uh, register today. And that is all for, uh, for now. Thank you very much for participating. And uh, so there was a question, um, so if, uh, I forgot what I was saying, I, I guess I was saying thank you very much for participating and then I saw a question, uh, something about, let me go back to the chat. Um, so what was the question? Um, so Arnold, Arnold just asked, uh, oh. can you indicate where, how to sign up for your Thursday BB webinar? Sign oh, okay, Sydney so just, um, send you a link to our faculty development website and um, if you go to this website you will see um, how to register for each webinar that I mentioned. So, um, also, as I um, said in the beginning of this webinar, we record each session and the recordings are posted on our faculty development blog. Um, Whitney or Erin, could you please post the link to the blog? It takes me approximately a week to post the recording, so sometime next week you will see the recording for this webinar. And we also have recordings for all webinars that we did last year. It, it was a lot. So if you want to go back and watch the recordings, that's great. They're available for all of you. And again, thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.